attempt to trying to explain 407 train, trapping order, train, trapping rain order two problems. Um, so at the beginning, I didn't know how to solve it. Then I took a look at the solution, shamelessly. <laughs> then, then I tried to understand the solution, but couldn't understand it. So I come up with another way of explaining it. So the problem is you have you have those blocks and it start raining and the raining will basically ended up on those lower places. And uh, the first thing as most solutions pointed out is like once you start raining, it's only going to end up in lower places and for any higher places, actually for any edges, there is not going to be any water because no matter how high the the edges goes, the water is just going to float off along the edges and gone. So the edges serves as a like natural barrier. So I call this attack on Titan or magic barrier problem. And uh, let's take a look at the note. So let's just draw the barrier at the beginning. We don't know what will happen, but it's very easy to determine what will happen on the edge. So it's very natural to think the problem starting from the edge inwards. Um, there are a few problems we need to answer first. Whether this algorithm will, you know, continue searching inwards to every element of the member, and um, the second problem is whether this barrier is going to be always continuous. The answer is yes, because you know wherever the water goes, if the barrier is not continuous, it will basically break and basic flow outside. So there's always going to be a barrier holding the water back somehow. Um, now, to attack a magic barrier, you always choose the lowest point of attack. And um, because if you couldn't attack the low, lowest point, which in this case is this one, then there is no chance you are able to flow through other points which are higher. Simple game theory. <laughs> so, um, so it's very natural to think of its neighbors. And let's call its neighbors X. Um, let's give the other names a better name. So anything around it, we we'll just mark it as high, means it's higher than the lowest point. Now, when we look at this number, then I start thinking about its height compared to L. If it's lower than L, sure, I can hold some water because you have X here, you have L here. And this is the water amount you can hold. And uh, we let's call it a water capacity. And this variable is going to record how many water we're able to hold. Now, when 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 x actually larger than l, then it's not going to hold any water. Simply because you know. If there's any water here, it just will flow through L and flow to the outside. We also know if if X is larger than L, then the barrier basically shrink because you know before the barrier is here, but when X is higher, then L is become useless, and this will become the new highest point. So any water is not determined by L anymore; it's determined by another lowest point somewhere along the edge. Let's just say here. Or it could be this one, but it could be here, um, because then if the water want to break out, this become the new, you know, when when this point is bigger than this, then there's no guarantee this is still the lowest point. So you need to look at whatever data structure you're saving this and find another lowest point and try to break from the the other um, the second lowest point. So that's pretty interesting. So we know for sure when x is larger than l, we need to put into whatever q. And from here, it's pretty. Uh, it's not still not very obvious why we're using minimum heap, even though we start searching from the minimum member. Don't worry, we'll keep looking at this. Now another problem we need to prove is whatever we water we put into when x is smaller than l, whatever water we put here is not going to change. So this is a bit harder to think. Um, why is this important? Uh, I'll explain this one later. Um, 
But look at this problem this way. Is there any possibility this water level will increase? I mean, it's not possible to decrease um, anymore because it's always going to fill up to the, you know, um, to the water blocking height of that location. But is it possible to increase? The answer is still no, because because um, L so far is the lowest point, you know, to the to to the outside world. It, even if there, I, mean, I don't care about what height in this area is going to be somehow this water is going to meet another barrier and those barriers is going to block it and there's no way I mean the water is going to ex escape and this is the lowest point still the lowest point so it can has a mu only as much water as to up to L now is it possible to have less water no either because if it has less water I'm just going to fill it up I mean there is one side that's holding it so I'm just going to fill it up so from here I notice something important is like each point is only going to be visit once that means once its water level is determined I don't have to I don't have to like re-adding it or change it in any way once the water level at the location is determined it's determined now look let's look at a, like some future case of how do we actually keep looking at this one um, then we keep searching now when X is larger than L I already explained that you need, need to look at the Q again and see, find another weakest link when X is smaller than L however where do you start searching now since this one is already searched but can you actually move this barrier no you cannot because because this one is still higher than this one so you cannot really remove this but then this is already searched the search algorithm basically stopped um, why you can move this one because say you start searching from the second lowest member here now you have another um, let's denote it somehow as A and B A and B and now you have B height B's height is larger than A um, I mean as the before algorithm there should be no water because the water just flow outside now you have no guarantee anymore because you could have B here you can, could have A here but how but you still have L, a, uh, L here. I mean, the water is not going to escape. I mean, it's still going to hold. I mean, I'm sorry, this one is not. Yeah. So basically, you're still going to have water here, even though B is higher than a so the importance of l is still important so you cannot start searching from any other point so where should start search you have to start search from the lowest point so far you known to you that will be x x is only known place that's like sensible solution to start searching um, because this i mean no matter around here this is still the lowest point to break off Now look at now let's just look at its neighbors. Um, now we have a neighbor A, neighbor B, neighbor C. If all of them are higher than X, actually not higher than X, they have to be higher than L. Then the importance of L is gone. But how do I know L's height from X? I need to pass down the information somehow. So that's the first thought. When I'm searching X neighbors, I have to know the information of L without losing it. So that's just like one thought of keeping keeping L and so far we just call the water blocking height. So water blocking height info somehow 
I don't know how yet, but I know I need to keep the information in order to know whether ABC is going to overflow or not. Um, now let's look at the case of when when only one of those neighbor is lower than x. I mean, when both is higher, we already know it has no effect on the water capacity. I just put those you know new barriers into the data structure. Now, when a is lower than x, we need to look more carefully. You have a here, x here, l here. You immediately notice the x height no longer matters because it already processed earlier. And we're talking about the case of x smaller than l, right? I mean, when x is larger than l, we're already searching other lowest point on this one to try to break off. So you, you notice the first thing is like, it doesn't really matter of x height anymore um, because whatever water you're trying to hold, hmm. it's only going to be stopped by L. So still, the, the, the question has become like, how do you keep the water blocking info somehow, even when you are searching X neighbors? And, uh, and the answer is, is very intuitive. Uh, it's not very intuitive, actually. So when we know in order to start searching from X instead of any other point, we have to put x into the queue or um, because this big why can't we start searching from any other point because I already explained if you start searching from other point it can still flow through L um, the, so you have to start searching from here and this happened to be lower than L so this need to be put in so I want to I also want to start from searching here right from 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 x neighbors so then you thought hey i always want to start searching from the lowest point i still don't know whether i should put x into the queue but i know i want to after l i want to start searching x instead of any other point because x is lower than l then you know at that point maybe i could put into a minimum heap because minimum heap always choose the lowest member now the question has become, what should I put into the minimum heap? Like, the, what's the sorting order should I put into the minimum? Is it by its own height? No, because when I'm looking at x neighbors, I notice it's not the x height that matters. It's the blocking height, which in this case has to be L, that matters. So maybe I should ch just ch put the blocking height of that location um, into the queue. So when I'm looking at A, I'm not looking at X height, I'm looking at the blocking height of X, which happened to be L. So how do I define what's put into the queue? Actually, I'll just use B to denote the blocking height. So X blocking height will be the max height of of H and the blocking height of L. So remember, we found X through L. So we basically have to put, you know, pop the L from the queue first. So we already know else blocking um, actually we already know the uh, else blocking height my bad we already know else blocking height so we know the new blocking height will basically be the maximum of um, x on height or the previous blocking height 
when x is smaller than l, then of course it's blocking height, that's wing. So this will be the blocking height. And so when it searches um, comes to a, it's still looking going to looking at the, the height of l. Now when x is actually higher than the previous blocking height, then it's going to be determined by x own height. So that solves the saving problem. And uh, whenever I process an element, I always put it back into the minimum heap, but instead of saving its own height, it's going to save a new blocking height into it. Um, then what is the water level? Can we deduct a function from this new blocking height? Sure. From any location, the water level, the water capacity is going to just be determined by the blocking height minus its own height. If the blocking height is its own height, that basically means it's higher than the previous blocking height, its neighbor's blocking height. Then, I mean, it's going to hold exactly zero water capacity. Now, if the blocking height is higher than itself, that means it can hold water. And the water height is determined by the previous blocking height minus its own height. So those two functions solves it. It also explains why you want to use a minimum heap and why you want to start searching here. So one thing I want to, I probably missed out in the explanation is, or didn't say very clearly is after L, why you want to start searching X. Let me try to explain that again. What's the next position to break? For example, if L, if I accident, if I took the L out of the equation, the next lowest point on the heap is going to be here, A, actually B and C. And I noted if C is higher than B, normally the water will flow out. However, you still have L here. So it's still going to hold water. So you cannot search at any other point, even if x is lower than l. So you have to search from x, even though it's not a new barrier. You put this into the minimum heap with its blocking height, but instead of putting into its own height, it put the blocking height of l. So what will be the 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 minimum heap look like in the data? Originally, you have a minimum heap with like this. Then when you process L, you take out this. Now, or you kind of want to put an X into it, but instead you actually put X blocking height into it, which happened to be L in this case. This is still the lowest point, so it makes sure it still start processing from here. So that explains, hopefully. Um, thank you.